virtual reality um, from a technology point of view is a 3D stereoscopic environment uh, where you can interact real time. It takes you out of a natural real world environment um, and puts you in a safe real world environment. It becomes very easy for a client to see what is going on, what they're now paying for. Kind of in the environment and the computer is creating it around you. And, and that's kind of state of the art. You can do anything you want in a virtual world and you can be anyone you want in a virtual world. But they can be so immersive that uh, the player can forget that they're, that they're actually learning. So you're still interacting from a natural point of view. They jump out and enter into the space with you or look far away and give you depth. It can involve um, head mounted display uh, where you're actually physically wearing the virtual environment or um, even a projector screen where you're watching what you're doing in that environment. It uses a, a lens system uh, uh, to separate the image for your left and right eye. And we are using the way your brain perceives the images to trick it into seeing 3D images. Eventually the hope is you will have audio, visual, and tactile physical feedback. I certainly, from high school on, wanted to be in some sort of field related to what I'm doing now. You're learning and you're training, but you're also taking that science, that technology, your engineering, your mathematics background, and you're, you're putting it into action. You shouldn't limit your thinking on STEM to think it's just scientists and engineers, not just planetary geologists or rocket scientists. It's also the guys who develop the, the physics engine, where they develop the, the code that's really all about the mathematics and not at all about gameplay. The mathematics is there, transformations, they're working with coordinates, they're having to translate between measurements. All of these models are just made up of triangles, each triangle declared by three vertices, which you can do in programming and render triangles. I think I used every math and science aspect I learned in order to program in virtual reality. And so you have people that are like me, the computer engineer, computer scientists, who are developing the software to show the information. And you have to have some artists and people who have the ability to create realistic looking environments. We start with polygons and put textures on it and then we compare it to photographs and try to get the lighting correct so that apples to apples comparisons, it, it looks as, as close to the same as possible. We're working very closely with the scientists in the particular fields and they know what the data needs to look like. I am not a physicist or an astrophysicist, but we have one here. It's almost uh, more of an art form than science, but they have to have all those STEM skills. In order to get into the field of virtual environments, there's many career fields that you could choose. You could um, choose engineering, you could choose, within engineering, you could choose computer science, computer engineering, industrial engineering, human factors engineering, you could choose psychology. They are always advertising for positions in companies developing games. From a designer point of view, it's great for manufacturing. You can look at um, how you're going to design this, how you're going to fit it. Certainly academics, you can become a professor, you can become a researcher in the field and, and really get into it in a level that is different from being a game developer. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, engineering and science fields that use the technology. Virtual reality in medicine has many different applications. Um, it's a very broad range from uh, if you're a surgeon and you're training, you can use uh, virtual reality techniques. Uh, you can train in a virtual environment and you can add uh, haptic feedback or force feedback so you know if you've gone too far in, in the type of surgery you're doing, all the way to um, training and rehabilitation. So I did a lot of virtual reality development um, from rehabilitation for amputees where we had to incorporate um, an amputee's gait into a virtual reality environment. So what we did is we took the individual 
and we had them self walk as if they were literally walking about five to ten feet behind themselves. So as they walked, they could actually visualize how is my arm moving, how is my leg moving. So it's kind of an eye opener to see how do you walk and then how can you correct that. Architect might lead the way, but we would help with our programs, our, our, our virtual reality programs to help draw those shapes and draw those diagrams. So once we create one of these models, we bring it through the entire construction process. Every piece gets, gets the benefit of the model. In serious games, the number one thing is to make a game fun that people are going to want to play and be immersed in, and then to sneak in the learning while they're having fun and being immersed. Moonbase Alpha was the idea of some folks in NASA Learning Technologies that wanted to create a prototype game as a mechanism to inspire and educate students. Get young people thinking about the possibility of doing STEM careers who otherwise wouldn't be thinking about it. People actually get into the game and, and they, they feel like they're on the moon. Through the challenges in the game, they're remembering key learning objectives that we want to get, that we want to show them. The 3D games provides a, a vehicle to grab their attention. My favorite part about my job is building an environment like, much like I would build an environment when I was a kid out of Legos, and then being able to actually walk through the world and look at the, my creation. As the technology uh, continues to change and people continue to research, now that it's becoming less expensive to, to use it, uh, there's a lot of things that, that are going to change in the future. Virtual reality provides an opportunity to take an individual's learning and put it into a module so the next person who comes along can learn what they learned and then bring it to the next step above it.